first they came for the programmers, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't a programmer. Then they came for the abrasive European computer geniuses, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't an abrasive European computer genius. Then they came for the non-native English speakers who were not able to easily assimilate into Western political correctness, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't a non-native English speaker who wasn't able to easily assimilate into Western political correctness. Then they came for me, but there was nobody left to speak up. Today we're going to get a little bit on the stateless side of stateless code and talk about the contributor covenant. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, congratulations. It is the most prevalent code of conduct on GitHub on open source projects. We go over to it here. Um, you can contributor-covenant.org. You can read up on it. And um, if you look at the, the adopters, it's pretty much a who's who in the open source community. It's a very large list of well-connected people. So I'm going to stir things up and become polarizing before I even really get started. The contributor covenant, as innocuous as it may seem to those reading it, uh, has been pretty quickly used as a weaponized instrument for kicking people off of the projects that they started. The um, the founder and uh, primary motivator behind this uh, contributor covenant, who you can go down and look at the homepage here. It's right at the bottom. Here is the background and it didn't take long for this to get weaponized so just like you can have a patent troll who goes around rather than actually inventing things and uh, being beneficial to humanity can go around and um, just try to tear people down and sue people uh, this is what we get here uh, and it's Again, 2015, so we're not talking long after uh, after the Trojan horse got into the city before this weaponized code of conduct practice started taking place. Um, as noted, this is intentionally, even by the um, originator political document, here at Stateless Code, we are stridently anti-political, so anything like this, uh, we're going to want to oppose to the extent possible. This doesn't mean that I'm not going to contribute to open source projects that use the contributor covenant, but I'm definitely doing so under duress and under protest. Uh, it should be noted, and I have to be specific here, obviously burn the, covenant, the contributor covenant with fire is a metaphor uh, I'm in no way um, inciting um, political or physical or any other form of violence. I'm anti-violence, um, so uh, including political violence. Take note, Coraline. So um, anyway, uh, and I, it should also be noted that by Opposing the Contributor Covenant, that doesn't mean that I'm opposed to diversity and inclusion. I'm just opposed to the way that almost every implementation of it in HR departments and open source projects and just about everywhere else um, takes care of it. It's not because I'm against diversity or against inclusion. It's because I love diversity and I love inclusion and um, that this is really just a thinly veiled power play that the people who run these HR 
diversity and inclusion departments. Um, it's just like government in that it attracts those who are the most power hungry, the most eager to, um, to use this power against other people. Um, you're not going to have a, a non-interventionist, non-activist head of diversity and inclusion at any company uh, in, in the country. If, if the position exists, it will be um, occupied by a far-left political activist. There's just no way around it, and um, the history has proven this right. Um, another important um, thing to note here is the difference between diversity and conformity. Um, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I believe in the triune God. And I think that, um, in a reflection of the Trinity, that while all, all humans are, uh, made in the image of God, we're each uniquely individual, that Christianity is one of the, is pretty much the only philosophy that ever was able to reconcile the one in the many in philosophy. Um, and it's, it's done through the, through the Trinity. The, um, so the uniqueness of people is where you really find the diversity. You don't have 10 different attributes that you, you just make combinations of, and those are your kinds of people. Each person is completely unique in all of human history, and these differences enrich us. You've seen... Um, and these classes, this collectivism that is used by the radical left in order to advance this worldview is done in such a way that it, it's meant to bully and to get um, any sort of dissidence within that perceived class uh, to conform. You're not... <laughs> Inserted, insert protected class here enough. Um, this is something that's used often by politically connected white elite progressive leftists uh, to bully people into thinking and acting alike because they're supposed to, because this kind of paternalistic um, view of things that you, um, you have to act like what the... Uh, the primary politically connected person of your class acts. You're not able to think for yourself or deviate in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I want to also note that inclusion also means including people with whom you disagree. Uh, I'm a libertarian, anarchist, conservative Christian. If I only associated with those people with whom I have... Uh, agree on everything. I'd, I'd, I'd be a hermit. There'd be nobody for me to um, associate with. I, I um, even among uh, anarchist conservative Christians probably have some un, um, unconventional and different opinions about things. Um, and again, I'm not afraid of that. People who disagree with me, I can still learn from them they can show me where I've been wrong. I've been wrong time and time again throughout my life. I'm a, a lifelong learner, and, and you should be too. Um, it's only when people actually express different points of view and that they're, um, they're weighed and you can poke holes in them and, and try to um, see if, they, if they're reasonable that you actually um, refine and iterate on your beliefs. Uh, I will also note, and I, as I did when I uh, did my intro here, uh, for all the talk of empathy, the enforcers of these codes of contact, conduct often have very little empathy for people who have trouble complying through no fault of their own. Uh, you're trying to, out of the goodness of your heart, contribute to an open source project, uh, working in your third language, and you don't know the nuances of how to uh, conform to 21st century Western political correctness that changes every six months, um, and, and you're going to get hammered for it. Um, likewise, anybody who's got um, 
mental illness or disability or impulse control issues or difficulty communicating in the written word, um, again, through no fault of their own, they are going to become frustrated and alienated under these, uh, these codes of conduct unless they learn pretty early on to come up with all the, uh, the right politically correct platitudes to, to use to, um, to con conform, because that's what this is all about. It's about conformity. Um, I'll also note that this is kind of like Alexander Hamilton with the Federalist Papers. Uh, he, um, the Constitution was one thing written, and uh, he went and did everything he could to get it adopted, and then uh, pretended as soon as it was ratified that it was the document he wanted rather than the document that was written, and continued to live his life uh, and, and pursue his political ends like this. Um, so you can see, as we've already shown earlier, uh, that uh, irrespective of all the uh, reassurances that the frequently asked questions of the um, contributor covenant uh, might provide here, they're only as good as the people who actually are enforcing these codes of conduct. And the contributor covenant boasts on the page itself that it's a living document, which gives you Calvin Ball. So if uh, you've got a living document, that means that the people who have the power are going to be able to interpret it in such a way that it benefits them and punishes those whom they deem as their enemies. Uh, so there, there's no, if you can uh, look at the contributor covenant, there's no ex post facto here. So uh, if something becomes uh, a new uh, invented protected attribute to the contributor covenant, there's nothing stopping them from going back through your history finding something that you said 25 years ago and using it to try to ruin your life. Uh, this is uh, abhorrent behavior and it needs to be, somebody needs to stand up against it. Um, beyond that, the uh, Contributor co Covenant puts a huge administrative burden on anybody who is uh, unfortunate enough to adopt it. And uh, this adoption happens uh, by default on a lot of um, projects. So if you create a Ruby gem using Bundler, they'll um, try to get you to include the contributor, contributor covenant. Likewise, in uh, NPM, um, a lot of other places, uh, these things are trying to get um, adopted by default where you need to actively resist against it in order to um, to not have become subject to it and have it used against you. Um, so uh, in, in addition, mo if you look at the vast, vast majority of open source repositories, they are uh, one person deals that um, you've got maybe 10% of the repositories that are um, have more than one active contributor to them. And then of those 10%, another 10% of those are actually um, large enough to be able to support the bureaucracy and mechanism in order to enforce the contributor covenant. Um, so uh, this is what I've kind of written to include in my projects in the place of the, um, the contributor covenant code of conduct. Um, the idea that the project maintainers reserve the right to moderate content, but are under no obligation to do so. Um, sure, you can act like a jerk on the project and the, the people who uh, work on that. Uh, market forces work. So you, you work on that and it, it winds up uh, alienating somebody who is valuable to you. You can work to, uh, to moderate that and to take actions to, um, to rectify it. But um, the, um, the way that the contributor covenant is written. I, I think it's, it won't be long and I'm, I haven't done the research on this, but before people start getting sued because of their lack of compliance and enforcement of the contributor 
covenant that you'll you'll this will be the next step uh, of this it's not enough to just um, ruin people's lives and careers um, on social media and on uh, github or whatnot that um, the, the person who said this is a political document is going to use surprise surprise the uh, the weapons of politics against um, those who are um, deemed deplorable. And again, I'm, I'm the one being inclusive here. So you can enthusiastically embrace the contributor covenant. Uh, you're welcome to contribute to, uh, to my project or any project that, that uses my burn the contributor covenant uh, document here. Um, just, you, you, but you have no power to enforce it here. You, 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 you gotta, um, check your homeowners association clipboard. Um, I'm going to use power against people at the door. If you want to contribute to my project. Um, but that being said, again, um, even if you are trolling the, <laughs> if my, repo and creating issues about oh so and so expressed an unimproved thought if your code's good i'm going to accept the pull request uh, and that's the way it should be so um, you don't want to react against these people who are acting like religious fundamentalists by um kind of walling off, walling yourself off and being uh, being like them so um that they are going to be uh conformist exclusionaries, I'm going to be for diver actual diversity and inclusion. Um, you can disagree with me and contribute to my project if your code is um, going to make the project better. And because this is an open source deal, um, all my stuff is released under um, the unlicensed and CC0. I don't believe in so-called intellectual property. Um, and even if I did, the, um, the way that open source works is if you don't like it, you can fork it. So you can take uh, somebody else's uh, project. You can do your um, goose-stepping code of conduct stuff on it, and um, we can coexist. So that's um, what we got. So... I, I anticipate that this will get some um, some rather passionate uh, comments if anybody actually um, sees the video. It might be one of those deals because I'm uh, laboring away in obscurity right now that this comes to um, comes to a head years down the the line. But I wanted to get this out here uh, early on in Stateless Code's life here to let it less to. I'm not going to pretend I'm somebody I'm not, that uh, I'm not going to conform to this or include this in the projects that I originate. And um, you can feel free to, um, to adopt it, uh, to um, use it on your own projects, uh, open pull requests to it, uh, open issues uh, for it. Uh, I'm not going to cave on the spirit of this. So... Um, don't waste your time, but uh, if we've got additional good points or research or something like that that we want to use or anything here is factually um, incorrect or distorted, you can feel free to um, to correct me. I didn't. I did this all in a day, so this, this isn't my um, doctoral thesis or anything. Uh, I'm open to um, to correction and the idea that I. Um, might be mistaken about certain things, but again, most of this is, um, as we can see here, primary sources, um, and um, and it, it's got links and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not making this stuff up. Thanks for watching this stateless codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.